Joining us now is a man from Wichita, a man who absolutely changed football forever. A guy who has a documentary right now on Amazon Prime. Prime. Prime that you should watch called Bye Bye Barry. That is a nice reminder not only of how sick he is if, or was at football, but also the entire story and everything he did and how he handled everything has been nothing but first uh -huh. class. Ladies and gentlemen, probably the greatest football player of all time, former Detroit Lion, Hall of Famer, Barry Sanders. Yeah. Let's go. Barry, how are you, pal? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. How are you guys doing? Dude, we're pumped, Barry. Like, uh, we understand that the Wichita, Kansas thing happened mm, nice. one of the last times you were on when we were talking about <laughs> Bye Bye Barry. Yep. And we appreciate the autograph and the send over here. And we understand that your Detroit Lions now are champions for the first mm -hmm. time in 30 years. A lot has happened in the last few weeks since we've chatted. How about this Detroit Lions team? How pumped are you for them? And what do you think this means for the future of the Detroit Lions, Barry? Oh, I'm I'm so excited, man! Like so many Lions fans, and and um, you know, I I feel like coming into this this season, certainly there was great just anticipation as to what this team would be. I, I think they met those expectations from from fans. I know that uh, you know, obviously we got a big one this weekend in in uh, in Dallas. Uh, looking forward to handing the, the Cowboys their first loss at home this, Ooh, this season. Going into Jerry yeah, World, but <laughs> I love that. You know what else I love, Barry? And I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to listen to everything you were saying there. As soon as we went on full screen on you, saw one of the sickest things of all time mm -hmm. over your right shoulder. Is that a, that's on the side of a building? Where, where, what is this? Where are, you're in a Zoom right now. Where is that portrait on the side of a building at? What? Well, it, it was uh, on the side of a building in downtown Detroit. For uh, for several years, they're uh, like late late nineties, early two thousands. So that's that's, that's what that is yeah. an image of. Hey, you are always you know because you retired early, in everybody's eyes, could have gone on to play, but I feel like your relationship with the Lions has always been good. Val that's good. Is that true? Is that how you see it? And what do you think of the current? structure of the lines with Sheila Ford Hamp mm -hmm. and Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. How is it different from maybe previous regimes that maybe you've been around or have you not been around as much as you are now? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm around much more now. Uh, when I, when I first retired, you know, things were, were probably a little bit icy, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, but no, th currently things are great. Um, you know, we're excited with what coach Campbell has been able to do what Brad Holmes has been able to do and all, all um, you know, led by Sheila Ford Hamp, as you mentioned, um, you know, and and they've constructed just a, a great team um, that that uh, we're proud of, that we've known, um, you know, can do exactly what they've done this year. So, um, but yeah, I think I think everyone's excited. Even from day one, people were excited about uh, about having Coach Campbell there. Just his attitude, uh, his approach, um, you know, and what he's been able to get out of these players. Yeah, I think ever since he said he wanted to gnaw kneecaps off whenever he's getting up, I, I loved him. But there wasn't that narrative everywhere. You know, a lot of people thought he was a buffoon. But it feels like him, Spielman as well, right? Wasn't he a part of the entire rebuild and let's do this? They wanted, like, Lions. Absolutely. You know what I mean? They wanted, like, hey, we want Detroit Lions to be a certain type of way. And I think a massive piece of this is you say you're around a lot more now. Calvin Johnson is yep. as well. It feels like they're doing it all right, right? It feels like the Lions are doing everything right in what it could be for so long. And it's obviously everybody's reaping the benefit of that on the field as well. It feels like everything's going good, right, Barry? Everything. No, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. And I think you look at the end of the first season with with Coach, where they didn't win a lot of games, but the guys played hard. I think they won the last three games. Uh, then you look at you look at last season, um, where you know at the end of the year, um, I don't think anyone wanted to see us. We went into Green Bay. Uh, knocked them out of the playoffs, uh, still, you know, and finished above 500. Um, and so uh, it's really been building to, to this point, um, you know, and and so, yeah, we're we're just excited about how things, you know, because really winning organizations, that, that's something you have to design. That's something you have to build um, and put all the right pieces together. Um, and they, they've been able to do that. Go ahead, AJ. Barry, it, it talks about now you hear coaches say, like, how do you handle success? Like, some coaches like being able to coach through losses. It's easy to be hard on them and keep the guys kind of motivated. Now, don't you think the Lions are kind of at this spot where, hey, they set the standard. This is who they are moving forward. How do you think they handle success? And how do you think the, the whole city around them will handle that success? That, hey, we're expected to win games now going into them. 
Oh, well, I, I think from, from a player standpoint, obviously success is something that you, you should expect. Um, you know, and I think that's one thing that coach has really instilled in this team is expecting to win. Um, you know, you see some of these games um, that they've been able to win, you know, in years past, um, they probably would not have been able to win a lot of those same games. Um, so you you expect it. Um, this is, a, you know, and this is a this is a competitive league. You know, when, whenever you're on top, people are gunning for you. Um, people want to know, you know, how how legitimate are you? And I think, you know, this team has to obviously prove that this weekend. Uh, but it's certainly a mindset that you take in, into every practice and every game. Um, but it's something you have to expect and anticipate um, because, you know, that's, you know, that that's why you play the game. And that's the only way really to be successful. Yeah, you earn that pressure, right? That's what everybody says. There's potential massive pressure coming right down the pipe. AQ Shipley has a question for you, old Barry Sanders. Yeah, Barry. So if the Rams come into Detroit in the playoffs, Ooh. what do you think that atmosphere is going to be like? And what do you think the crowd reaction is going to be to Matthew Stafford coming back home? I think <clears throat> it's going to be hard to contain the excitement of Lions <laughs> of Lions fans. I promise you, um, having a home playoff game. Um, I think I think they'll be fairly cordial to Matt Stafford. I think we appreciate his time uh, as a Lion. Um, we're you know we're glad he had a chance to go win a chip uh, a few years ago. Um, so I think generally speaking, you know people um, people respect him. But uh, but, you know, but in in a scenario like that, obviously he's coming in, you know, he's coming in as uh, an opponent <clears throat> and the, the fans are going to go absolutely berserk um, with, with a home playoff game at Ford Field. I promise you. <laughs> now, the thought of remember, he said, what he said, we're the fire, you're the kindling, man. Yep. Mm -hmm. Remember, he said that for like oh, yeah. a spring practice that they had open to the crowd down at Ford Field. And his message to the crowd was like a motivational speech to the crowd and what they wanted to do. And it's like now Detroit is all the way. What was How many sellouts were straight there? And then it stopped because yeah. there was doubt and a lack of faith. But then all the great football town, mm -hmm. great football town, mm -hmm. always has been. Now they got a reason to talk their shit, which is good news. Because if this season was only remembered for that Jack Harlow halftime Thanksgiving oh, performance, boy. that would have been a damn shame. But instead, <laughs> we're talking about the brand new, new lines. lines. Obviously, Barry, you know Foxy. Foxy yep. has some things to say to you. Yeah, Barry, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you were part of the process in hiring Motor City Dan Campbell <laughs> along with uh, Sheila Ford Hamp and Spielman and all that. During that process, first off, thank you. You got the right guy, obviously. But during that process, what'd you learn about MCDC and what'd you see that said, hey, this is our guy for for Detroit. Well, yeah, the way the way it really happened is, you know, Chris Billman, uh, Sheila, um, and Rod Wood, they were pretty much in Brad Holmes, uh, um, uh, Sheila Ford. Um, those were really the, the personalities who made the decision. Uh, I was kind of in on some of the conversations, um, and really, you know, Chris was looking, um, and the group was kind of looking for someone with, you know, who could really lead the team, who who they felt like young players. Um, or players in general could respect, um, you know, and and who had a really a winning mentality, you know, and so those are kind of the some of the conversations, some of the things that that we were talking about during some of those meetings. We showcased his press conference when it was announced he was the head coach, and then some of the responses. It was like, mm -hmm. and then they go oh ten and one, right? Yes. And then they win, and he cries. Yep. It's like Dan Campbell, like when they think outside the box, it's like from a head coaching standpoint, it's like. There's a box, you go outside of it, and then you got to hop in uh, one of Elon Musk's rockets. That's right. Then you got to go out of the stratosphere, and then you got to go outside of that as well. Mm -hmm. Whenever you think about what head coaches normally are, how they normally speak, how they normally act, what they're supposed to say, how they're supposed to say it, it's like he was one of one from the beginning. They go 0 oh, 10 and 1. There was a lot of people saying, here we go again. But it sounded like, and you said Chris Spielman's name first, it's like, we knew exactly what we were getting into. They've been patient with it, which not in the past has certainly been something with Detroit. Right. It's like this feels like a good football program. Oh, yeah. You know, it feels like they're making all the right decisions. And a lot of people say it's because Peyton and that guy from Dumb and Dumber. Yep, mm -hmm. Jeff Daniels. They went into a tub of, uh, I think it was Jungle Juice, mm -hmm. in the middle of Ford Field, and yep. they got rid of all the all the things that were, all the curses. Right, yep. Foxy, you know what happened? Yep, the Bobby Lane curse. I believe that was a tub of whiskey. Yep, and that's... Oh. Never been the same since. No, John, a little, well, you, a little well, lighter than jungle man. juice. Whiskey's in jungle juice. Okay. Nonetheless, congrats to Detroit not yeah. being yeah. 
cursed anymore, yeah. seems like. <laughs> D-Bot has a question for you, Barry. Yeah, first of all, Pat mentioned earlier, but thank you once again for my uh, personalized poster. It's awesome. In the man cave. Uh, but um, this uh, this year's MVP race, kind of been going back and forth with the favorites. I saw you respond to fellow Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp and say, hey, you know it's going to be a quarterback award. They made me split it back in 97 with Brett Favre. You still feel that way? And who would be that quarterback that would potentially split it with CMC, in your opinion? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, well, you, <clears throat> I would say you look at, uh, I mean, Dak's having a great year. Um, you know, Jalen Hurts is having a, a solid year. Brock Purdy is having a solid year. I think, I, you know, I may be forgetting someone. Um, Lamar but, Jackson. Uh, I think, but uh, L Lamar Jackson, obviously, yeah. Um, that, that's what I was forgetting, yes. Um, so I think in either one of those four, um, uh, you could throw their name in that hat. You didn't care at all about any of that, or what? You were pissed when they give you the co one. <laughs> what? How? how did it? Because you know you did remind people, like, hey, just a yeah. reminder. No, <laughs> I'm much older now. Still got it if you need it. One play, probably. Definitely. One game. I would say how, how you think ten plays, first down, one series. What do you think right now? The body could go if it has ten plays. I think. I think with this Lions offensive line, yeah, give me give me between ten and fifteen. Ooh! Oh hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> 10 and 15 touches of Barry Sanders. That's just, you, that's just my, I watched the doc, and I couldn't believe they had you on the sideline for that first. Like, what what was that? Did you miss training camp? Why were you on the side? I think it was it's the Cardinals. Your first game, you got in at some point, but because you couldn't imagine that right now in today's NFL, but how did they keep you on the sideline for so long, and why? What was the reason behind that? No, because I, I signed um, – I signed the week of the first game, so I missed all. Oh, the okay, camp. gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so that that's that's why that happened like that. Um, it wasn't like any kind of a punishment. I just, you know, I hadn't been able to get the playbook or anything like that. So I, I signed really late. Um, I didn't know. So play. I, I, I told him, yeah. "You just tell me right left. That's we can a, yeah. we can figure this whole thing out." But they wanted at least a week, you know, for me to start the NFL. And we we got a chance to see in that documentary. And then uh, who's who's Zito? Who's Who's Barry's got great? You got a great. You got good, your guy's good guy. Jamie Ber uh, Bernstein. Jamie Bernstein. Is that the name? Yeah, great. Very very active. Sends us stuff like, hey, this is happening. Good. And then we saw your college football stats. He went through like that one year, the amount of yards you had in every game, and there's one game they held you to 150 yards. Yep. Yeah, you must have been sick. Yeah. You must have been sick. I don't know. <laughs> but this guy went for like 250, 300 yards. Right now, I guess. 35th anniversary of him at the Holiday Bowl, yeah. where he won for 222 yards and five touchdowns. Oh, oh that okay. <laughs> you, so you not playing that first game, I assume all of Detroit was like, every time we've seen this guy play football, he's better than everybody else. Why do you think, you know, like, oh, here we go, Barry Sanders, highlight Jeez. from college. My God. See ya. See ya. Running so fast. That nobody could touch you ever. No. Nope. You know, you get in the NFL, it's the same exact thing. Was there any, you know, like when you get to the NFL? Because I'm at the age that we just know you like 10 years, 10 Pro Bowlers, 10 All Pros. They see you later. Yep. Best of all time. All we see is highlights. Was there down games? Did you have down <laughs> games ever? Is, is that something that happened? That's a real question. That is an actual, like you woke up, you know what? Not feeling it today. Yes. Not, not able I think to. It happened. You think it happened? I think it happened occasionally, yeah, for for sure. It's nice. That's a nice thing about where I am, you know, being retired and in the Hall of Fame. They they only pretty much show highlights, um, and they don't really show the the uh, <laughs> the lowlights. But um, but there were there are a few. I mean, you know, we lost a few tough playoff games and and things like that um, that I can think about. You know, in in Green Bay, oh. lost actually lost a home game to Brett Favre uh, in the pre playoffs. I mean, so mm -hmm. but we don't we don't need it. Dive into that. <laughs> no, I nope. agree. I just want to let you know, your highlight reel has mm -hmm. spanned my entire life pretty much. Oh, yeah. And every time it's a new play. So it's like, what a weapon you were. Speaking of weapons, Detroit has one. Ty Schmidt has a question for you. Yeah, Barry, obviously not the same situation when you got drafted, but I feel like this year when Jameer Gibbs got taken with that premium pick, a lot of Lions fans, at least early in the season, were kind of saying like, hey, we're not seeing this guy as much as we want to. David Montgomery was kind of the bell cow. But then down the stretch here, getting ready for the playoffs, it seems like you know he's kind of taking the, the lion's share, like the carries and, and touches and things like that. Um, and he's obviously added like a, a major new dynamic to their offense. 
Have you been impressed with the way they've kind of decided to use his usage now? Because it seems like, you know, he doesn't have all those extra miles on his on his tread, you know, going into the playoffs now. And, and he's firmly kind of in that position where he's expected to make a massive impact, you know, week in, week out. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think they just kind of wanted to start him off slowly, um, you know, and, and uh, work him in. Uh, the certain situations, but but from really from day one, I mean, he's shown that sort of burst uh, that we that we see. Um, you know, I think he's either uh, just eclipsed clipped a thousand yards or on the verge of clipping a thousand yards. Um, but um, you know, the kid has you know the kind of burst that you just don't see, um, and it's it's really transferred uh, to this level and, and to the NFL. And with, really, with all the other weapons, it's just really accident what he does. But but every time he gets the ball, it looks like. You know he's going to do something exciting, um, and he's just been a great addition, um, and really met with everyone's expectations uh, and hopes for uh, being drafted that that high. Ben Johnson too, what a weapon! Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Feels like he gets it whenever they need it. Mm -hmm. They have something. Yeah, seems like you know Ben oh, Johnson yeah. has an answer, and it's like some coaches, offensive people, I think they run out creativity mm -hmm. by the year's end or whatever. They get scared to do something. Ben Johnson always has something, feels like. Every always single, an answer. Always. And, and when they need it, you see it. And they'll hold it, too. Yep. Very patient play caller. I feel like he is... He's a guy that's obviously going to get a lot of gigs, but Jameer Gibbs, when he gets going, he's Bang. fun, dude. Yeah. He is fun to watch play football. Go ahead, AJ. Barry, when you watch, uh, you watch defense, it's kind of attack ball carriers these days you watch them like guys are coming up throwing monster punches at these guys trying to get the ball out it seems like sometimes sacrificing their body trying to, to get the ball out and I think that's that's something that's pretty new over the last five ten years I believe it seems like guys are doing that more and more was that happening at all when you were playing and would that change your running style if that was kind of like how it's going today I think you certainly have to be just more aware of it as a runner that um that they are attacking <clears throat> They're attacking the ball, um, you know, and defenses are, are trying to, to not just get you to the ground, you know, but but um, get a turnover, uh, what have you. And so I, I think so. Yeah, it, it, it probably would would change it to, to some degree, um, just being being more um, conscious of it, you know, and that's something, you know, and obviously even in practice, you know, something that you rep and think about, um, you know, because guys are definitely. Um, and, and, you know, it is, uh, you know, it's certainly making a difference. Uh, I think you see probably more turnovers uh, because of that. And defensive coordinators are, are really teaching that uh, to their guys. So it's something you got to be aware of. Yeah. Darius Leonard mm -hmm. used to do this every game. He would come flying in. You know, Peanut Tillman obviously mm -hmm. started this entire thing. I think he's an FBI agent now. Yes, yeah. he yep. is. Shout out to him. Serving a country. We oh, appreciate him doing it. Fair. And also becoming a guy who does the punch out. And then, like, it became a very normal – Darius Leonard did at least six attempts a game. Yes. And it's, like, full body – you're talking about, like, them working it. Full body punch, and the ball would come sure. out a lot. Marlon Humphrey. Shaq Leonard was going for it the other night a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to – he – They're not doing that. You missed, though. Them. They're not doing that. You missed, though. It's like They're knocking dudes' to wind out, too. Imagine it, how many shots you're taking. If you're catching – if you're not hitting the ball and you're catching the ribs – Knocking the wind out, like it takes its toll. I think on runners. Well, and for the puncher though, too, you miss. That's a helmet. That's an elbow. You know, just like in. A, it's a great. Ad. I love yeah, that. If you run back to take the over uh, twenty in Detroit, it wasn't. Went too many guys in position to. Uh, they weren't close enough. To <laughs> yeah, the you, yeah, you just try to get some claw. Yeah, well, that's the thing. He actually has an NFL record. I've just been told of most amount of carries without fumble, like eight hundred and three or something. There Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Hell yeah. Uh, Barry, you ain't giving away the fucking program. No, <laughs> you ain't getting this. You put the ball in my hands. I am going to make sure we have it for the next play. And then once you score a touchdown, by the way. Boom. There you go. <laughs> Done this a lot. Why'd you, why? Because you were just, yeah, what are we talking about? Score a touchdown. Cool. Yeah, I could have ran further. This thing stopped me. So I don't know what we're doing. You always just hand the ball to the official guy? Like even in high school, everything like that? That was just move? Yeah, yeah, I, it was. It was just, never uh, once did you. Ha! <laughs> I got you. I'm better than you. I'm better than you. What? I just cooked both of you. You're down. You're still out. You suck. You should be <laughs> on the field. Not one time because you are referenced by everybody. Barry Sanders used to just hand the ball yep. official. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what he used to do. That's what you should everybody do. Everybody says it. Everybody says it across the entire country. Was there ever a time where you were, you know, like I'm Barry Sanders? <laughs> Maybe you know, was there ever, ever that ever happened? 
Hey, for Pat, for me, it, it was more of a thing of, you know, um, I just did my job and there's actually more to do. I, I want to get here a few more times. So I'm not I'm not going to get too excited about getting here, you know, once or twice. I mean, you know, so <laughs> it was always more to do, more more to accomplish, um, you know, and when you get to that the, the end zone for me, the, the job's been done. You know, <laughs> five. By the way, Holiday Bowl, thirty-five years ago, two hundred twenty-two yards, five touchdowns. Uh-huh. That's right. it. Has three touchdowns in a bowl game, right? Huge deal. He's like, excuse, excuse, what? what? We talking? We got two more quarters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got two more quarters. Five touchdowns. It's crazy. Same draft. You got Deion Sanders, who's on the complete opposite of that spectrum. Yeah, he but also step forty yards out. Yeah, did you there. ever? I never, never even thought about. You know, it's crazy. Maybe no, obviously not. Obviously not. That's why. <laughs> that's why you are who you are, and we are who we are. Mm-hmm. Just absolute dipshits. You're a legend, man. We appreciate you joining us. Congrats to your Detroit Lions. Uh, the Prime Doc is awesome. I don't know if you've got a chance to watch it or how you would treat that, but it is, it is fantastic. You're a good dude. The NFL is lucky that it Thank had you. Man. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank, thank you. Great, great to be here, and I'm, I'm glad to be here with Directv Holiday Bowl, celebrating my 35th anniversary of playing the game. It's hard to believe it's been that long ago, but, but uh, thanks for having me on again, and let, let's do it again soon. Yeah, you got it. And also, let's get this thing back on a building. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, let's now. get this thing back on a building. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. You look good, Bear. You look good. Can still give you 10 to 15 <laughs> snaps if you need them, yep. ladies and gentlemen. Hall of Famer Barry Sanders. Yeah, Barry. All right, Barry. See you, buddy.